Okay, we are live. Uh, welcome to the Soul Infused Monday Show, and I hope you're live, Karen, so we'll see. So welcome, welcome. I'm super, super excited. <laughs> super excited having my friend and amazing person, Karen Kenny, here today. And uh, before we even jump in, I want to make sure you hear and see us. So if you're already live here on the show, leave a comment below, say hello, uh, click the like or love button, do whatever you need to do in order to tell us that you are actually here, okay? So welcome officially again to the Soul Infused Monday Show. And Karen, it's so, so wonderful to have you here today. Oh my God, I'm looking excited. I'm so happy to be back. I know I've been a guest a couple of times and we always have so much fun. So it's just a it's a joy, it's a thrill, and just thank you for the honor of having me. To We always have great conversations, so I'm always happy to say yes, and let's have fun. Yes, <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh, yeah, two people are here. Okay, Debbie is here, Alyssa is here. Yeah, peeps are joining in. Fantastic. And if throughout this call you have a question for Karen, I mean, you can ask me anything anytime, and you hear me talk all the time. So you use the opportunity that Karen is here today. So leave the questions in the comment uh, section and I'm, I'm gonna, we're both gonna be, do the best to read, answer them. And, yeah. um, <clears throat> and so keep the comments coming. So say hello, say where you're watching from, say that you love us, send us some love, send us your questions and just have fun with me and us. And I was just saying to Carrie, like, uh, and you, some of you know her already, she was in the Soul Infused Monday, a Soul Infused uh, Woman series, and she has been a guest on my show already, I think, last year or the year before, I don't even remember exactly. And I was just yeah. saying, this is so special because it's the only person ever that has been three times interviewed by me or be a guest by me. So I Aww. love you, Karen. So I'm super excited. I love you, Siha. Thank you so much for having me back. And uh, hi, Michael. Hi, Debbie. Good to see you guys. Hi, Beth. Hi, Beth. Hi, Michael. And um, Karen, because, and as you know me, I, I hate reading bios and, and yeah. making it all weird. But not everybody knows you, obviously. But I would, I would love if you simply share a little bit about you and what um, you know, whatever you want to share that about you. And that before we jump into any topic or question, does that sound good? Yeah, sure. I was. Uh, it's funny because somebody was asking me the other day, like, "Oh, what do you do?" And I'm like, "Oh, it's such an American question." And I always laugh. What they really want to know is how do you make your money. <laughs> <laughs> but. I, I do a lot of things, right? So I'll just kind of go broad for a second. I mean, so technically in my day-to-day -day life, so um, I, I think I first and foremost identify with, besides being a child of God or, a, you know, an extension of the divine, that's always my first identifier for myself. But then in the world, as I move through the world, like, you know, what do I do and how do I, if, if what I am, I always say, if what I am is love, and my purpose is to extend that love. That's really the question for me. How do I extend that love? So how do I work with people, right? My brothers and sisters. So I would say first and foremost, I identify as a storyteller, as a lover of words. So I write and I speak and I have a podcast and uh, I'm a spiritual mentor. I'm a spiritual teacher. Um, I've been a yoga teacher for like over 20. I can't even believe it when I say it. Like I'm I know. Like, like what? How have I been doing anything for over 20 years? So I've been a yoga teacher for over 20 years. I am a gateless uh, writing teacher, uh, which is a, a methodology of writing where we help to quiet the critical mind so your genius and your brilliance can come through. Uh, I am also, what else do I do? I've, I've been doing, I don't do it anymore, meaning, but I have uh, been certified in Thai yoga massage and I've taught and certified other people to do Thai yoga massage for a lot, like 12 years and stuff like that. I love getting my hands on people, you know? So really, it's just like I do a lot of stuff, but I guess technically how I get identified in the world is as a spiritual teacher or a spiritual mentor. But I write and speak and, you know, I'm working on a memoir right now. So that's, gotcha. that's, yeah. that's the thing. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm so with you saying here, I've been doing this over 20, over 20 years. The same with you. It's like I do so much. It's like the question, we can only scratch the surface, right? Exactly. Uh, so let's, let's, and it's really not so important what you do anyway. It's more like who you are being and you described it very beautifully right now. And it's ultimate really about, you know, whatever, whatever it takes for you to peel off, whatever it, is in the way to be in touch with love and choose love and to expand love. So how we do that doesn't even really matter. It's that we are doing it. So I want to ask you something, um, just for my audience, obviously, that I know, and I know these are really crazy times, very intense time, yeah. um, uh, scary time, uncertain time, 
in good, bad, high, low. But what I see for many, including myself and my clients and my audience and anybody that I talk about, right? Or talk with is it's just a little bit like a roller coaster these these days. And everything is intensified and I talk about that a lot. But I would like to hear your approach or your you know, whatever comes up for you for anyone that is watching you say, Yeah, man, this is these are crazy times. I don't know, you know, like how to handle it, or it's too much, or it's overwhelming, or um, sometimes people think it's only them. The whole world is kind of like in that bubble, so to say. And uh, so I would like to hear your, your, you know, like your inspiration or wisdom around that a little bit, so that he is something else than just always my wisdom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, so to answer Debbie's question, yes, it's a Boston accent you are hearing. <laughs> you ding. Hey. ding, ding. Right. Uh, so, I mean, I think so in A Course in Miracles, so also one of the things I've been a longtime student of A Course in Miracles, almost 30 yeah. years now, which is insane to me. Uh, but in A Course in Miracles, there's there's a, a lesson that says, you know, a, a healed mind, a healed mind does not plan. What that means is, is it doesn't mean that you don't have a plan. It means that you don't make the plan like you don't make the plan like I don't wake up with an agenda of like oh I need to fix this or heal this or oh my god COVID-19 I need to do this or I need to do all that so for me it's not about I am very much an action taker like me like something's going on in the world I feel called to do something I'll do it but the key piece there is like I don't show up with my ego plan that I have to do anything for me when it says and uh, a healed mind does not plan what it's saying is, again, it's not that you don't have a plan, it's that you don't make the plan. So each day, before my feet even hit the floor, literally, before my ass gets out of bed in the morning, I ask to be used in service. So there's a few prayers in A Course in Miracles, and I'll just share one because it's wicked short. Please have me go where you would have me go, have me do what you would have me do, have me say what you would have me say, and to whom, please use me. So I don't show up with like, and of course, like, of course, we have to plan to like pay our bills. There are certain things in the human experience you have to have a little bit of a plan for. But I just try to meet the day and whoever's in my path and whoever I'm going to interact with, you know, um, moment by moment by moment. And trust me, I'm a control freak. I love to plan the shit out of everything. But I've learned over time that, you know, my best thinking is what got me here. Right. So if yeah, I, I, I want to deal with or if I want to have any kind of solution or be helpful or be the embodiment of love or whatever the thing is, I have to allow, I just have to let the ego mind like I just have to go like, yeah, thank you. Thank you for your input, but not listening. So I try to just be the clearest conduit and channel in love for inspired action for an inspired plan. So right now, everything's so intense and there are people who are saying, I'm seeing everything from, oh my God, I got to do this to, I don't know what to do. People are paralyzed by a fear of judgment and guilt and shame. And then people have all this fear, like everything from, um, you know, the, 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 the anti-racist movement, um, you know, Black Lives Matter to COVID to, you know, people like, I don't have money. My business is shut. Like there is so much fear. There is so much fear right now of the unknown. And, you know, faith for me is not necessarily having faith in, because a friend of mine just posted something that was so fascinating. She said, faith is insecurity, meaning we have to be able to believe in the, in the unknown and the unseen. So right now we're being asked to kind of have faith that love is going to win, even if there's not maybe a ton of social proof right now. <laughs> yeah. I think the thing, the best thing that we can do is to kind of, I always say, I always say to my clients, sit your ass down, shut the f up and listen, like go online, get your divine assignment and then make plans, right? Follow the plan that you get your individual curriculum from there. Yeah. I love that. I mean, you said so many good things, but it's like the last thing was like, oh, shut up and listen. I always say like, go in and go up you know it's just like yeah. go up if you don't go up you stay in the mud and in the mud and i know what it means to be in the mud and now right now everybody and it's all uh if i wouldn't have that kind of like unplugging or that way to go for me it's going up right to source god divine soul whatever you want to call it um without that i would constantly only try to control my environment because it's hard to deal with so i love what you you said about that 
and also with um you know having a plan but not just kind of like you know all the time i have to do this i have to do this and that and the one thing also that you said about uh, what you shared about faith like for me is also and i use i like to use the word trust faith it doesn't matter but it's like it's easy to trust or have faith when things are going fine and I, 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 I say it like and i know i, I really rarely curse on on tv but it's like it's like Trust is not your, you know, your trust when you think it's going well. Like trust means that you trust when you don't know what the fuck is going to happen. Yeah. That's trust. And that's tough, yeah. right? But that's exactly so what you're talking to. So I, I love what you just shared. Well, so, I, oh, sorry, I, I, yeah, a follow up question on that because I, I can hear like some people asking, yeah, that's great. And it sounds good. But sometimes I'm so overwhelmed that I don't even feel like I can be in service because I'm in such a mess, right? I hear this a lot and I've been there. So can you talk into that? Because I just felt those questions coming in. And by the way, if you do have a question for Karen, please leave it in the comments and or say hello so that we can also support you in that way. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of different uh, spiritual traditions say it, say the same thing maybe in slightly different ways. It's like you cannot give what you have not received for yourself, right? So it's like, yeah, of course, it's, it's all the, the, the metaphors of like, you know, um, put the oxygen mask on yourself first. But it's like there's a difference between, um, I always say like one of the most important things that we, one of our most important tasks while we are here, I always say is to get your, get your, get your act together, right? Because that's the thing, like I always say, if your self-help um, stops with you, uh, it's it, it's it's not complete. It, it, we have to go beyond the self and self help so that we can then go out and, and help others. So yeah, you don't want somebody who like literally like let's just use um uh, let's use a um this might be a bad example, but I'll just just off the top of my head, I'm I don't want to take advice about sobriety from somebody who's drinking a fifth of vodka a day, right? So it's like absolutely. You have to able to get your life in order gets get, doesn't mean you have to be perfect it doesn't mean you have to be perfect it doesn't mean you have to have it all figured out but start to get your life in order and i always say to people like this is why for my spiritual mentoring clients daily spiritual practices are non-negotiable because it's in that time whether it's through meditation prayer contemplation mantra journaling whatever whatever people's pathway is to stillness and to be able to find that alignment it's non-negotiable because it's it's from that that time as my meditation teacher ashwaran says it's during meditation that you download the mojo to navigate the rest of your life and you don't want to be creating from a fear space or a chaotic space or a confused space so getting personal clarity you know, and it doesn't mean that you ignore the needs of what's right in front of you. Even if you're messed up, you can make a sandwich for a hungry kid. You know what I'm saying? So it's not, no, I, know exactly what you mean. I need to go off into a cave or, or a five month silent retreat and then I can be helpful. Yeah. No, you, yeah. You, don't have, you know where you can be helpful from, but you've got to get your, you've got to be determined, devoted, disciplined, and dedicated to getting your mind right. So then you can actually be useful. Yeah, I love that. There's a question, but I come, I go to the question in just a second. I want to uh, emphasize what you just said uh, and point out, and people hear this from me all the time, meditate, meditate, daily practice. I think sometimes when we are so overwhelmed or things is crazy, we are looking for something new instead of going back to the basics. It's yeah. not that you need a new tool. You don't need a new strategy. You just get to get up in the morning, sit down, whatever that looks for you meditation, breathing, your body, and it's hard. It's hard when we are in distress. So, but I love what you just said because it's really not about reinventing the wheel and to come up with the latest uh, version of a specific tool. No, you've got to just sit, go in, go up, go down, clear. And also love what you said about the sandwich, like we overcomplicate it and the pressure that people put themselves in is like, you don't have to cure cancer, just make a freaking sandwich for someone as a met metaphor, right? So I love that. So I'm going to put the question in here for you because I've answered that question many times. I want to hear your, the question is, how do you quiet the inner critic? That is what spoke me back the most. Well, I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of different 
things like there's a lot of different ways I can come at it. So I'll come at it from this way because I don't usually take this way in. But it's kind of like um, so often if there's an inner critic, there's a voice that's happening. Well, so there's two things. One it's usually not your own voice. It's usually something that's being played, some tape that you recorded when you were a child of somebody telling you you weren't good enough or you were too much or you were stupid or you weren't pretty enough or you weren't smart enough or you're not worthy. Like whatever that old tape is, it's just the ego. It's just the ego doing, it actually thinks it's protecting you, but it's, it's really not that helpful. So I always say to people, like, you have to watch yourself like a hawk, meaning you have to watch your mind, your thoughts like a hawk, and you have to be willing to really take a look at that voice and be like, who does that actually belong to? Because sometimes the, the players who put those voices on the tape, sometimes you don't even talk to them anymore. They're dead. You moved away. And, and you're still hitting the play button, even though it's not even real or true anymore. And of course, in Miracles says a beautiful thing. It says, anytime you do not drag your past into the present, you are reborn. And I hear that is you are given a new opportunity at life and love and happiness and peace, right? So just always be questioning the inner critic. And, and I'll just say like, and so there are certain things that we do as gateless writing teachers where the inner critic gets quiet because it knows it's only going to be met with love. We are never going to tear down. We're only going to focus. So it's about creating a container where that happens. But trying to do that with yourself can be a little bit more challenging. However, you know, it is, it's just, it's people want it to be, I'm not saying this is true for you. Um, who, who asked the question? Alyssa, Alyssa, yeah, I know. Yeah. I'm not this is true for you. So don't, I'm not pointing my finger at you. But I think that people sometimes just want the quick fix. Here's what I know to be true. It's called a daily spiritual practice because we need it daily because the ego mind is so cunning and, and it's so suspicious. And of course, in miracles, we say the ego mind speaks first. It speaks first and it speaks loudest. And I always say, and I always add, and it's always wrong. <laughs> but it's often, <laughs> I love that, yeah. often the first thing that we hear. And then the other thing that I'll say is a lot of time the critical mind has some roots or some ties to um, self-judgment or a lack of self-forgiveness, which is often tied to, they're all cousins, often tied to regret. And I once heard regret, um, which is all based, it's all past. It's not present moment thinking, right? So um, one of the great definitions that I heard about regret is something like paying too much attention to decisions you made while you were still learning. And I think if we can free ourselves from our former nonsense, from our clumsiness, from the times that we just tripped up or we, we acted out of fear or scarcity or whatever, when we weren't in faith, when we weren't in trust, when we weren't in alignment, when we were what I call in the crazy mind, you know, if we can find some forgiveness and some compassion around that, it's so powerful. And the critical mind, it's like, it's, it's like, and of course in miracles, like you, you said, um, you know, go in and go up. And I often say, go in before you go out. Right. Same thing. Same Z's. But what, uh, yeah. When you say that go up, and of course in miracles, the way that I see that is, you know, go above the battleground. The ego mind, this world, this life of duality, it's the battleground. And, you know, Einstein says it perfectly. You know, we've both said this before, but you cannot create solutions. You know, you cannot find solutions yeah. with the same level of thinking that created the problem. Yeah. So, and also I always add this, like keep a sense of humor. Because this being human is like being in the forgiveness Olympics. And every day, just another forgiveness opportunity to forgive ourselves when we didn't quite get it right. And to recognize that like mistakes and um, apology, like the reason why they exist is because I, I think the human experience is we're full of clumsiness, even though we don't mean to. So a lot of self-compassion goes a long way. <laughs> yeah, I totally agree with you, Karen. And I and I know, like, and I just wanted to say not only to Alyssa and to everyone, and I've, I've known Alyssa for many years, so she's very committed on the path. Um, uh, and I love also that no matter how we explain it, it's like ultimately the same, just different words, you know? And uh, two things I want to say to that real quick. First of all, because the time right now is so intensified as a whole in humanity, Everything is coming up stronger than usual. 
So if you struggle with self-judgment right now more than usual, it's just it's part of the process, even including me. And I was, and humor is so important. I was even sharing, and I don't know which class of course I talk a lot, obviously, but I was just sharing that, you know, someone actually moved into my apartment and I had a new room in, and I didn't even notice right away. It was very subtle. And then my inner critic was next door talking to me. Suddenly it was like, what the hell is going on? Why am I so like suddenly out of the blue? Oh, you're this, you're pathetic, you're, you're useless, you're a failure. Like all of that stuff was coming up. And I was like, what the hell did that happen, right? So it's just the time also. The first a plug, it's really not you. It's not only you. And love what you said, forgiveness, acceptance, compassion. And to, I love what you said. I want to say that, repeat. Uh, the ego talks always first and is louder. Like, yeah, so the, ego, <laughs> the ego talks first. And, you know, another line in the Course in Miracles that I find very helpful is it basically says, um, uh, and, and insert your happy word for God, love, spirit, universe, goddess. I never care what you call it. Right. But just to, to be uh, to be correct in my speaking, uh, paraphrasing, it basically says that um, go, um, the voice for God comes to everybody. God talks to everybody, but we're so preoccupied with, preoccupied with our own voice. We're so preoccupied preoccupied with the chattering of the ego. It's kind of like, you know, when you're doing work, but you have a radio playing in the background. And it's, it's kind of like, I'm like, well, you can replace that chatter with maybe mantra or with something more, more helpful, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. An ongoing, like, I, I kind of like to think about mantra is like, even when you stop maybe consciously saying it, it echoes in the chambers of your heart, yeah. and your mind, right? So totally. it's just, and look, there's a thousand ways, you know, um, Ralph Waldo Emerson, he says it beautifully. And again, replace God for your own happy word. But he says, God enters into every individual by a private door. So what works for me might not be somebody else's way. What works for you might not be somebody else's way. But what does matter is that you find out where your private door lies, what it is, and that you open it to the divine, yeah. To, to, yeah. to to love, right? To universal yes. love, what do you want to call it? Because that's that's the key. And if you just try to navigate your way, like muscle your way through this insanity, this extra insane experience right now, you can't do it. We need to call upon something greater than ourselves. Yeah. Hey, otherwise, we all go nuts, like seriously. <laughs> and, and I have uh, two more questions here that I'm going to give you in a second. And um, also with the radio stations that I often use, it's like once very simple, I give it just something that came up very simple that I consciously do when, because it hasn't been an issue for me for years, but now with everything's going on, I suddenly hear my inner critic stronger too again. Yeah. And one, a very yeah. simple, one simple thing that I sometimes do when I hear the voice saying, what the F is wrong with you? That's one of my classic, <laughs> classic, you know, like what, what's wrong with you? And I know a lot of people can re relate to that. I hear it. And I said, okay, so I know it is. And then I ask myself right away, what's right with me? Just a very simple, just, I just changed the question. Instead of focusing on oh, what's wrong with me, it's like, okay, so what's, what's, a, what's good with me? Like, oh, what's right? What's going well? And it, it's, it's, a, it's a mental little exercise and over time, again, it's not going to happen overnight. Nothing happens overnight. It's consistency. But well, going back to previous, uh, I just, I just, uh, okay, go ahead, Karen. No, no, it's two, two things off of that. I just saw a really powerful piece of a documentary. And it's a woman who is working with incarcerated prisoners talking about shame and like, you know, like all this stuff. It's very powerful. And that question right there, they actually use it. And she says, you know, we look at we look at our incarcerated, you know, populations and we ask, you know, what the hell is wrong with them? Like, what the hell? And she said, what we should be asking is instead, instead of what's wrong with them, we should be asking what happened to them. Mm, yeah, but what were the circumstances that created maybe making that kind of a choice? And then the second thing I wanted to say, and, and my podcast on this is actually coming out on Thursday. So you guys get a little sneak peek. <laughs> but the, a powerful question I have people ask themselves when they're feeling triggered, when they're feeling like their button was pushed, when they're feeling like, oh my God. Um, and, you know, and, and they're like, find themselves reacting or overreacting or in that intense place. I always say, ask yourself right now, how old are you? Because 51 year old KK, right? Spiritual, you just all that stuff. 
she's not the one who's reacting. It's like, like oh, that's eight-year-old me. That's 14-year-old me. So yeah. when you stop and say, how old am I right now? And then you can extend compassion to that. It's not like you got a critical voice at 30 or 40, right? Oh, no That's way. Right. right. You know what I'm saying. So it started so long ago. So if you can just ask you yourself, how old am I right now? And then extend compassion. Like you become the adult that that earlier version of you needed so that you can kind of quiet that critical mind and say, hey, I've got it. I've got you. We're okay. Yeah, absolutely. It can be very helpful. And Karen, uh, before I ask, uh, show the next question, uh, yeah. that's from previous, uh, Jules is asking if you could repeat those three phrases that you use in the beginning from the Course of Miracles, if you just oh, could repeat yeah. those real quick. Yeah, and of Course in Miracles, it's, it's just one of the lines is in a different order. So just so you know, it's slightly adapted. And it's this, please have me go where you would have me go. Please have me do what you would have me do. Please have me say what you would have me say and to whom please use me. Great. Thank you, Karen. And here's You're a question welcome. from Gail. Hi, Gail from the UK. Um, how do you begin to do forgiveness? Is it a practice? Tapping, affirmations, question mark. What is the best, what is the method you use, Karen? Oh man, I don't, I, uh, so, you know, we don't have enough time to go into how A Course in Miracles actually thinks of forgiveness. But most, <laughs> most people don't want that. I mean, here's, here's what I would say, number one, about forgiveness, which is so fascinating. We don't want to forgive. You just have to, first of all, accept that. We often don't actually want to forgive because if we are to forgive, right, if we are to forgive, it means some part of our ego mind actually thinks that we're agreeing that with what, what happened is okay. And that's not it. <laughs> so um, I always say like, first of all, just admit to yourself, get really honest with yourself that you just don't want to forgive. You like being right. Some part of us likes to be victimized because then we have excuses as to why we don't, we can't do things. We love to be right. So of course the miracles ask. So I, I have a see, look, I have a thousand ways into forgiveness. Right. Just give oh, one. <laughs> no, I know, but I'm trying to think of like, so for me, the greatest thing that I often ask myself, of course, a miracle says it like this. Do you want to be right or do you want to be happy? Right. It says you can have a grievance or you can have a miracle. You cannot have both. So I, I have to get really honest with myself and I say to myself, do I want to be right? Do I want to make them wrong? Do I want to hold on to this thing? Or do I want to be happy? And really the question for me is the way that I interpret that is, do I want to be free? And freedom to me is everything. I don't want any other person, any other thing, any other circumstance keeping me from stepping into the divine experience that I know is mine, that happiness and peace are my inheritance and that I'm blocking it. Like when I'm holding on to a grievance, now that doesn't mean something happens on Tuesday and by Wednesday you should get over it. I'm not it's a process. It's a process and sometimes it's what I call a slow burn. It takes a while and even, you'll think you forgave and then you'll think of it and oh, you like you feel yourself oh, again. So it's kindness toward yourself. But I think of it like every time I don't forgive and I lock somebody in the in the your bad prison of my mind, right? I have to stand God with the keys. So I'm in the prison with them and I don't want to be in the prison. <laughs> so it's easier for me sometimes to forgive. But let me say this last thing. You cannot truly, I believe, forgive somebody without accountability first. Not that they have to take responsibility because sometimes your abuser or whoever is already dead or you don't talk to them anymore. It's not like you need verbal confirmation. But when you have to hold them accountable and say, yes, this did happen. Yes, this did happen. Even if they don't admit it, I know it. And reconciling that, moving through the anger, the sadness, the grief, then, then the healing can happen. Because otherwise you're just stuffing it and pretending like. Yeah, no, that doesn't work. And then it's like the bypass. And I also understand that this is, you can only, or we can, 
really only scratched the surface here, but I think you said a lot of good things and I see the comments here that, that that's really great. And you guys, it's, we're basically only here a few more minutes. If you have one other question for Karen, leave it now. And while you do that, while you leave the question here for Karen, or send her some love or whatever you want to do. Karen, how, and you mentioned your podcast real brief on Thursday. So how can people, anyone who wants to follow you or want to connect with you a little bit further, how can they find you? What's the best way to, to get into your vortex? Yeah, so I mean, if you just go to my website, uh, that all roads lead to whatever. So it's just Karen, <laughs> K-E-N-N-E-Y.com. My podcast is The Karen Kenny Show. Um, on my on my website, they can see like any events that I'm doing, the stuff that I'm up to. You can follow me on social media. My handles are usually at Karen Kenny Live, L I V E. It's pretty easy. And then there, I always say my spiritual team is coming in hot, so I'm going to say this very quickly. This this was very helpful for me in forgiveness. And of course, in miracles, we say it like this: people are either showing love, they're extending love, or they're crying out for love. They're crying out for help. And the only sane response is love. It doesn't mean we become doormats, but when you remember that somebody is acting in a particular way and you recognize the divine in them and you say, oh, my brother or sister is, is suffering right now. They're either showing love or they're crying out for love. That has been huge in my forgiveness process. Yeah, that's a really, really good one. And I think also that that creates way more acceptance than judgment. It's so easy to judge others. You know, oh. everybody. Well, everybody has their own inner battle, right? So at what time is your podcast on Thursdays? Um, it, it comes out like early in the morning on Thursday. Okay. So they, okay. they can catch it. And I saw that you put my website in the comments. Yay. And hot so much. And you guys, let me just say, you're so lucky to be in Sonia's uh, vortex, her energy field. Like the, I think that some of you have probably known her for a long time. So just what a blessing and a gift. And thank you so much for having me back. I appreciate it so much. I never take it for granted a chance to make new friends and connect and to have great conversations with people I love. So thank you, sweetheart. Yeah, you're so, so welcome. And hey, I, you know, I don't know how long I'm going to do this show, but I might actually ask you another time as well. So you know, you're one of my favorites. Like, I always love connecting with you. always love. And you guys that have watched this today with Karen, I and I often ask this my people, which I think is so valuable. So tune in for a moment out of everything that Karen shares today. Like, like what's your biggest takeaway? Like, what's your aha moment? Like, what's the most valuable thing you're getting out of hearing and listening just and leave one comment like leave just one comment below what's the most valuable thing you're getting out of this call today or show today and if you're on the replay and you're not live right now so if you're on the replay you're actually live right now so <laughs> you're live right now so leave a comment below as well right and do you have any last words karen anything else that you would like to leave the audience with before we say goodbye for today i mean i would just say, like at the end of the day i think if we all got down to it the, the thing i would say to everybody is just be kind be kind be kind be kind to yourself be kind to your brothers and sisters, be kind to the animals, be kind to the planet. If we move through the world with that as the heartbeat, you know, the beat of our heart in every moment, what is the most kind thing I can do here? And sometimes kindness is fear. Sometimes the most loving thing you can say is no, right? But oh, yeah. be kind, be kind, be kind, and keep your sense of humor. Keep your sense of humor goes a long way too. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for that reminder. Yeah. And just before we jump off, I'm going to share with you a few things here. What are people saying is, is compassion, self-forgiveness, again, self-forgiveness. Then the question asked, what's happened to them? Rather, what's wrong with them? That was a really good one. Yeah. So leave the comments, comment. Even if you're leaving, we see them. Uh, if there's any other question that comes in, be sure that we're going to answer them. And uh, crying out for love made me cry, Dolene. Oh, they are kind of like putting so nice here about not being right, just making happiness a priority, love to self and others. Course of Miracles feels true. Thank you again, Karen. Yeah, thank you, Karen. I love you, Karen. Thank you so much. Until next time, and you guys come back next Monday again for another Soul Infused Monday show. Have a blessed weekend. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>